Hello, you beautiful souls. My name is Dylan John, and today we're gonna do an editing breakdown of that video portrait that I posted last week. I thought I would start off with how I got the inspiration for this. So I had been to this villa before, which is this huge mansion in Bali. We were very lucky to get access to it for free, but so I kind of knew where I wanted certain scenes to take place. And because it is a beautiful villa and it's very classy, I made sure I found a song that I felt fit the vibe of the video. And this song is Phuket, from, which is a song from Artlist. It's kind of classy, has kind of club vibes and very tropical vibes. In fact, in the beginning, you can especially hear birds and stuff playing. That's not my sound design. It is within the song. And so I just, I felt it was a, a great match. Let me play it out for you. You hear it? Even though she's inside there, I was like, ah, oh, you can hear birds and she's inside. People are gonna think that I suck. <laughs> but um, nevertheless, I, I think it sounds, I think it's a great sounding song. The only thing that I had planned was when this beat drops right here. I knew that I wanted this transition to happen, this fall to the bed and then pop up and I, I specifically wanted this because in my last video portrait, I don't think I did a good enough job at creating a, a story, if you will, from one scene to the next. It kind of just was like, here's some shots. But so the idea behind the video was, okay, girl comes home to mansion. She hangs out in her room and then she goes into the pool. And then after the pool, she gets ready to go out for the night. And that was kind of the basic story, if you will, even though it's really hard to make a story of a, of a video portrait for the most part. But so I knew that I had to transition a certain way. I felt that this would kind of be a cool transition to add into the video. And so I just made sure that I wrote this down in my shot list to have her falling on the bed. And we did maybe, actually not a lot of takes, maybe three takes of her falling down on the bed and me trying to like fall with her. I think maybe I had a, a pillow on the ground and I just tried to fall with her and keep her in frame, which was very difficult. But this was the best that I found, which is not that fantastic. You can see I didn't even drop to her level, which I should have. But so all I did here, if I open up this compound clip, we have her falling down here. And I think also in the shot, I added, yeah, a prism uh, effect to this shot. So if I turn this off and on, this is a plugin from Motion VFX, uh, which I really have been enjoying using, especially in these video portraits, because it certain ones will soften the edge and add like almost a dreamy feel to it. There are a lot that will distort your shot, so they don't work very well. But this one I thought worked great, kind of blurs the edges quite quite a bit. And then I also added M Amber Aberratic, which is another Motion VFX plugin. It just adds chromatic aberration. But so I added that to give it more texture. And so as she's falling down here, I made sure that it wasn't on the other side of the bed, that it was like she was close to this side so that I can go below this bed frame. So right, I go, go below the bed frame. And actually what I do here is just turn off the opacity. I just go from 100 opacity down to to five and that's because right here it it's behind a lounge chair and then I have start from the bottom and now we're here and then I come up to her kind of sitting up. But uh, something that I wish I had done is not used my vintage Helios 44-2 lens for this because the stabilization in that, obviously there's no stabilization, but it just, you can see every jitter and I'm not able to use active stabilization because if you've seen, if you watched my last editing or filming breakdown, this particular lens with active stabilization on a Sony camera just creates an incredible amount of wobble. And so I had to turn that off. Um, so it's not the smoothest transition transition. That's a, probably a regret of mine is using this lens. However, I do love the fact that it adds all these beautiful light leaks and, and flares and stuff, but nevertheless, little regret. So you'll see I added not much sound design because of course the visuals take priority here. This is, I'm obviously doing this to kind of show what I can do as cinematography wise and just creating beautiful shots and stuff like that. So sound design kind of takes a back seat, but I still add a little bit, like in the beginning, let me just isolate this. Right, 
right? So really simple. We have a like a suck back sound for the title and then the added a motorcycle Foley for her driving. Even though this is a scooter, it's not a motorcycle. It doesn't make that noise. And then just a simple whoosh as it changes from her starting from outside to coming to inside. And if I play it out, you can barely even hear it. Right, but it's there and it definitely plays a role in what you're seeing. And then I also added some risers. So if I solo select these, which I have made to my C key, you can solo select by, oh, sorry, not that one, this one by pressing this button. Normally it's option S. Oh, the riser doesn't start till later. Right, so it's building up to the drop. I made sure to have the point where it transitions from her falling to the next shot right where the beat drops, as well as putting these risers in that exact location as well. And so if I turn this back on, you'll hear that it does really help and you can probably notice it a lot more now. See, if I mute this by pressing V, feels more full and dynamic when you add just a little bit of sound design, almost like little cherries on top of the music. But just looking at this shot, some of you may have been thinking, why did you add this? This prism is too much. And the only reason for that is because if I turn this off, you could see my me moving into the, to the frame and I just couldn't have that. And so the only way that I found to keep a fairly good composition, keep her in frame the way I wanted and get rid of my hand moving into frame was to add this prism effect, which is once again from motion VFX. I'll put out all of these plugins in the description, but I, I think it looks okay. Once again, I really like video portraits that are dreamy and almost fantastical, not a word. Is it a word? Fan fantasy? Fantastical. So let's take a look at this shot. This is a wide, obviously, of with the Sony 24G Master, and I added quite a few things on here. I was not super organized in this edit. I just kind of was adding different color corrections and stuff nonstop, so it's not super clean. But so basically, I think I just lowered my overall exposure for the uh, with this color wheels. And then Color Finale 2 Pro, which I'll go over in a second how I kind of graded these. All I did here was desaturate the oranges. I think I added a normalization LUT to convert it to Rec. 709 first and gave it a little bit more of a look. I felt my white balance was a little bit off, even though this was shot at sunrise about. Little too warm for, for my taste. And when I was shot matching, especially with these shots, which this lens comes off as a little bit cooler because it has kind of this blue cast over it. So I wanted to make sure I shot matched appropriately. And so I just added to color curves and changed this to yellow, which you can do by just clicking this. And then I just lowered the amount of yellow in the shot by pulling down on my curve here, more towards the highlights, but still in the midtones. And this does quite a lot. And then it adds some of that kind of teal back into the shadows. And if it's not a perfect match because the lenses are so vastly different, but if we go back and forth, you'll see that it is okay. It, it does a, a much better job, certainly. And something I added quite a lot, and I seem to be doing that a lot more in my videos, is using M Movie Light, which is another plugin for Motion VFX. And this is a really amazing, I love this plugin. You can find it in your effects. Has a bunch of different options for what are like kind of flares and light leaks and stuff that you can add. The nice thing that I like about it is it also allows you to add some vignetting. This one, not so much vignetting, but I felt this worked perfectly because it was a shot where you would assume the light would be coming through these trees. And so it kind of adds this these light rays. And then I think what I just did was went into my uh, light colorization and I adjusted the color or the hue of those uh, light rays. And then I also added M Film Look, which is another Motion VFX plugin. This is not sponsored by them, but M Film Look lets you do a lot. You can do some basic color grading and stuff, but what I mainly use it for is the fact that you can, let me double click this and we'll turn this off, is the fact that you can add blur 
around the edges as well as chromatic aberration, which I think I did here and then chose not and then turned it off. The lens blur here, you can then adjust the feathering by moving this in so it makes it more, it makes it softer. But you'll see if I rack this off and on, uh, if I rack this off and on here, if you look at the outer edges on the outside of the circle, you'll see it blurs this tree, especially on the left side. And if you kind of make it so it's an oval like this, you'll kind of get that a little bit of a swirly look, which is what I like in a shot. You can also add grain and vignetting and a letterbox and stuff on this, but I did not do that for this video. You'll see that I added a lot of zoom in and zoom out plugin titles. These are from the plugin pack and music video. And this just helps to add a little bit more motion into each shot. So if I just turn this off, This is just a simple slide, me sliding with my camera. But if I add just a little bit of a zoom out, which you can do using, I used to use my trans, the transform tool, make keyframes and then zoom out. You can also use the Ken Burns effect in here, which I don't like as much. But this particular preset in M Music Video is so nice because I just lay it out over top of my footage. I go in here and then I put the percentage, the amount that I would like it to zoom out and it really helps speed up my workflow. But so if I play this out, you'll see it just adds more than just a simple slide. Here's another example of me using M-Prism. I use this in this particular shot because if I turn it off, you can kind of, it just is too busy of a background and I wanted you to be really sucked into her walking here. So you kind of like, if you're looking at the shot, your eyes would kind of go to the right. What is this weird mass um, of trees to the right? And so what this does is kind of just draw your eyes in a little bit more. So you're just looking at her because she's the focus, obviously. And then you'll notice in a lot of these shots, I added broadcast safe. This is a, just an effect that you can find in your effects tab. And what this does is, if I turn this off, let me pull up my Luma waveform, I'll press Command 7. You can already see I'm over 100, which means I'm overexposing my highlights and blowing out my highlights. Let me add another correction and just crank this. And if I just, uh, if I turn on our broadcast safe here, I gotta make sure that's, that's before it or after it. If I click this, it cuts it off at 100. You're still blowing out that the detail in your highlights there, but now it's making it broadcast safe. Let me pause real quick to tell you about a total gold mine of a service if you're creative. Today's sponsor, Envato Elements. Here is why a subscription with them is worth it. Envato Elements has 55 million assets that you can download. That is a number big enough to make your brain spin. It has Final Cut Pro and Motion 5 plugins like tons of different transitions, really cool cool animated templates, titles, and more. You can create better sound design with their large list of sound effects as well as royalty-free music. Download their stock videos and photos for whatever your creative mind can come up with and use their huge list of fonts and motion graphics for whatever you'd like. You can find everything on there, and I mean everything. The best part is you can download as much as you want, unlimited downloads on all of their creative assets, and what's cool is that they offer a seven day free trial so you can see for yourself that it's worth it. Use the link in the description and you'll get 50% off when you select the annual subscription. Become a better creative and join the Envato Elements family. Okay, I'll show you the color grade here on this shot since it's a little more prominent. So the first thing I did was I lowered my overall exposure a bit and I think what I must have done is I added the Bali Beach LUT first. I felt it was sitting, the overall exposure was sitting a little bit too bright, even though it's okay. This is her skin right here, and it's right about like anywhere from 40 to 65. And for her complexion, that's a general good range. Anywhere from like, it definitely depends, but anywhere from 25 to 70 IRE is where skin will normally lie, depending on the tone of your skin. But so I, I lowered it, right, uh, probably after, and then I just drug it over here. So I, I added the color wheels and then just drug it before the Bali Beach LUT. And then I went into Color Finale 2 Pro, which if you are looking to get really get into advanced color grading, I highly, in Final Cut Pro, I highly suggest this plugin. It's really easy to use. But so what I did here was added a couple things. If I turn all of this off, 
Let me make sure this is selected. So six vectors is a really cool tab that allows you to select six different colors and you can adjust them really easily just by clicking it and you can adjust hue, saturation and the brightness or the luminosity. So here in the red, I think I just adjusted the red will almost always adjust the person's skin. So if your skin is off, you can quickly go into six vectors, you hit the red and you adjust the hue till their skin lines up on the skin tone line on the vector scope. Not that this isn't the vector scope, but you know what I mean? It's just a quick way to correct skin tones. But the big thing I did here was I went into the green and I adjusted the hue and saturation and luma of the greens in our shot. So if I reset this a little bit, the reason you're doing this is because you're trying to achieve a complementary color look. Complementary colors are colors that complement each other, that match each other or are opposite of each other on the color spectrum. And what this does is adds color contrast within your image. So it, it creates, just by doing this, it creates more depth and a dynamic look to your shot. This is something I'll go over in my color grading course. I'm working on it now, but it will help to make your shot look way more dynamic. And there's different options. You can do a triadic look, split complementary, complementary color. But so here I just went for a complementary color look. And so we change the hue of the greens so they sit more of in, in a teal range because you have the orange of her skin, somewhat orange, and you want the rest of the certain colors to be kind of a teal. And then all I did here was did that kind of YouTube popular look where you desaturate the greens here, which I normally don't like to do, but I thought it looked, I played around with it and I was like, yeah, that looks good, I'll go with it. And then all I did here was lower the brightness of my greens a little bit to make it just a little bit moodier. So uh, what I think I did here was I just pulled up the exposure of my midtones. And what the log wheels do is allow you to compartmentalize different luma values, shadows, midtones, and highlights, and make adjustments only to those sections. The log wheels are different than your, your primary wheels that you use. So for example, if your highlights are, are a bit too bright, you would use the log wheels in Color Finale. You'd pull down on this and you see how it only adjusts your highlights. It makes it so uh, you don't mess up the rest of your shot. Very minute adjustments. I'm so glad that Color Finale added it in. And actually, I had suggested this to them a year ago, whether they added it in because of me or not my ego will decide. <laughs> no, but they probably have been planning that for a while. But so all I did here was raise my midtones a little bit because I just felt it was a, a, a little bit too dark. And then I also still wasn't happy with the desaturation and, and color change of my greens. So I added another six vectors and repeated the process again till I found a really desaturated teal look for the greens that I liked. And then the last thing I did, I think was add took out some, looks like some green from my midtones. So I, a little bit green yellow. So I just pulled the opposite direction of my green and yellow or the lime, I guess. And I added it more towards the blue and that just helped to kind of balance the shot a little bit more and make more of a teal and orange look. And then I also added on quite a few clips, Real Smart Motion Blur, which is a plugin that allows you to intelligently add blur to your shot. And the reason I did this is because I only shot in 60 FPS and 120 FPS, so I could have that slow motion, obviously. So for the shots that I felt that I wanted to play out in a normal speed, obviously I had this blur to give some of that natural motion blur blah, 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 black back that you would find in 24 FPS footage. And uh, usually I found this setting is the best. If you do get this plugin, 0.5 and the motion set sensitivity at 50, I found it works really well. And then I think the last thing I did here, like we went over, I added M film look and blurred those edges, which you can see right here in this corner. Something that, that Jane did a lot was she kind of naturally without me saying anything, she would kind of like, like do this with the camera. And so I played off of it. And when she did that a few times, like I just whipped the camera, like she's kind of like pushing the camera out the way. And so that's exactly what I did here. I used this as a transition from this pool scene to the next scene where she's getting ready for the night. And to make the effect a little bit better, I added this plugin, which is a simple slide transition. It's free from the OG Ryan Nangle. 
And here, I think I used M-Film Look to add this flare, this fake flare over top. I also blurred the edges a little bit more so you're more focused into her. I think I added uh, a shape mask on her, which if you are a subscriber of my channel and you watch my color grading tutorials, you know that I do this often where I will use shape masks and adjust the outside so it's darker, the inside so it's brighter, and that just gives a little bit of a vignette to focus in your subject's eyes where you want it to focus on. I did the same thing here too, where I vignetted this and it allows you to kind of focus more on her. Someone in a Facebook group mentioned that I shouldn't have added this leaf here. This leaf is, in, it was in the shot. <laughs> And I actually just chose this shot because uh, the dress is just a little bit too revealing and I didn't want to get blocked on YouTube and so I just kept that shot in. Here's another plugin that I use for Motion VFX which is a free plugin called M Light Diffuse if I turn this off and on. It looks a little unnatural but I kind of liked it because it's it adds more of that dreamy look to it and it just adds some like a pro mist effect, some halation to the brightest, to the edges of the brightest parts of your shot. Once again, still using these zoom in titles to kind of add a little bit more dynamic motion into the shot. These two shots are probably the two shots that I wish I could redo just because I they're too similar to each other and they're back to back. It may actually even, I don't think it's the same shot, but normally you'd want another shot, maybe like a close up of her after this or maybe a detail shot. And then you come with this shot next because you don't want two shots that are kind of a similar focal length and so similar to be right next to each other. And so that's a, probably a regret of mine. So something I do a lot, and I mentioned this in my last editing breakdown, is I try to make sure that my shots are matched up based on, uh, could be composition, color, subject matter, audio, motion of the camera. And this helps your shots flow a lot, lot better. And particularly in this video, and I guess every video I do, I make sure, especially with fast cuts, that your eyes are not moving too much on the screen. Because if you're having to look in the, like the left corner for someone's face, and then all of a sudden the next shot is quickly like bottom right and stuff, and then it cuts to another shot, you're gonna be like, oh, what just happened? Like I, you weren't able to focus in on the subject, and you may or may not recognize that, but subconsciously, you will think that it the video just didn't work. So that's something that you can focus on is making sure, especially with fast cuts, this is mainly for fast cuts, that your subject's eyes are not having to move too much to find the subject. For example, in this one, I think I may have a better example here, but I, something I do a lot and in, in really in this video is reframe my shots. This one, particularly because you can see my camera right there. But um, what I'll do is I'll scale in. Yes, that's gonna degrade the quality. So what I did here was I scaled in and part of the reason I did that was because this shot that I wanted to be before, she is much higher in the frame. I don't think I adjusted this composition, but maybe a little bit. But so if I take this off, I'll reset that. And if I go back and forth, Right, you're having to look up and then look down. And if I play this out fast speed, it just doesn't, it doesn't flow well. Yeah, so just try and remember that if you need to scale in to match where your subject's eyes should be looking, I suggest doing so, even if it degrades the quality a little bit. But I love these shots. This, they, they have these wooden boards in front of the windows and it just leads to perfect, beautiful texture on your subject, I loved it. Last thing about color grading, I spend a lot of time making sure that every little thing works well. And so if I turn all these off and we just go one by one, looks like I added contrast and sat here. Filter is to sharpen her eyes because I think I'm uh, focusing on her hair and her eyes are out of focus and so here I used trackable shape masks in Color Finale and um, tracked it on this main eye that you'd be looking at and then sharpened it. I spend quite a lot of time adjusting specific things in the shot and I actually had to murder my darlings here because I shot an entirely separate scene in a movie room in the house and it was really, really cool. I'll show a shot or two where I'm shooting into a projector and we had a vape pen and used it to create like a, a, a haze basically that will cause these light rays 
from the projector to really show up, but I couldn't fit it. I couldn't fit it in this minute 30 video. And so I had to cut it out entirely. I just didn't know of a way to include it naturally in the video and not have it seem forced. And then last thing here that I will show you is you can do this if you have a song that doesn't have a solid ending, which this song didn't. If I hit Command R to show what I did as far as retiming, what I'll do is I will go to the beat of a song where I want it to stop on and I'll press Shift H, I think it is. That causes you to create a hold frame and then I'll add a cathedral sound effect which will allow it to sound, it creates reverb essentially. So if I hit, if I play this out, and then creates that ending for you, even if there's no solid ending in the song. So if I play this. You have that option. If you have a song that doesn't fit well, hit Shift H, that'll add a hold frame. You can stretch it out. The reason I cut this is because the cathedral effect will play out in the music even if you go down to zero with the effect, uh, which I don't know why that is. So if I crank this all the way to zero, you can still kind of hear the cathedral sound in the song. So I'll just make a cut at the end and then I'll turn off the cathedral sound in that part. Thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it and I will see you guys in the next video.